Number four, biochemical evidence of evolution. In a previous video, we talked about DNA, and we're going to see that there are many molecules, pathways, which can be um, used to prove that there is a common ancestor to many species. So 4.1, we're going to look into these common features. So as I just said, some molecular physiological features and metabolic pathways are the same for many species on Earth. So these key features and pathways, we've studied them this year. The first one is the genetic code. When we talked about protein synthesis, we, we said that many species, almost all species, have the same genetic code. So that is a indicator that they probably had a common ancestor. Protein synthesis, which goes with the genetic code, so in the sense that a lot of the enzymes, for example, RNA polymerase, are very similar, and other proteins and other enzymes which will intervene, they're very similar in different species. Universal use of ATP as an energy currency. We saw that, um, for example, in plants um, during photosynthesis or during respiration, ATP is produced, and then this ATP is used for other things. Well, many species use ATP as energy. So again, this is an indicator that many species had a common ancestor, and this common ancestor most probably had these features. That's the line from your the official S7 4P syllabus. These similarities support the idea that species on Earth have a common ancestor who had such features. 4.2 molecular physiological differences. So we've said that common aspects showed that many species had common ancestors. But you also know that there are differences among species. And when you've got the biochemical elements, the molecular elements, you can sometimes date back when certain changes occurred. So you can do that by um, using DNA proteins or serums. So because of mutations, DNA will vary and therefore proteins and serums. Serums are, is what you have in, in your blood. And these um, elements, if you look at the number of mutations, it can, it can be used as a certain indicator of time and evolution and try and date back when certain mutations took place. Now then, let's have a look at how we can say and show that proteins present variations. One method is the serological testing. And we're just going to do the basic principle now, and we'll have a look at it in a bit more detail later on. So the basic principle is that different species will have different sets of proteins in their bloods. And you know that antibodies will bind to antigens. So if these proteins... So I took one example. So we've got red blood cells with certain proteins on the red blood cells. So if these red blood cells are introduced into someone's el someone else's blood with not the same group, well, the antibodies will bind to these proteins, in a sense, thinking that they're strangers. And therefore, there's going to be an agglutination. So by looking at different levels of agglutination when you compare bloods from different species, you can therefore deduce if they're more, more or less closely related and sometimes deduce when the mutations took place on the time scale. A second way to show that proteins vary is by comparing amino acid sequences. So a bit like when we did it for DNA, well, you can do a similar process for 
amino acids. There are specific techniques, we're not going to detail them, but there are specific techniques to sequence proteins and know the amino acids. Um, the example we're going to look at is cytochrome C. And I'm going to use this internet site, ontrackmedia.net, Gateway Biology, etc. Um, because this site has a really nice example um, with the cytochrome C protein to show how um, you can build trees, phylogenetic trees with it. Well, this is the ontrackmedia.net site. We're going to have a look at this example to, in the end, build a phylogenetic tree and also to show you that you can also have differences in protein sequences in the amino acid of sequences of proteins. We've got this grid. We've got different species. We've got the horse, the chicken, the frog, the human, the shark, the monkey, the rabbit. OK. Um, you can see that we've got different names of amino acids. So you've got Glen, Pro, Phi, etc. These are the abbreviations for different names of amino acids. So just like for DNA, you can simply have a look and see if there are differences. For example, if you compare the frog and the human, you can see that in the second position, there is one difference. There is a pro here and a ala here. Just underneath, we have, we have a table which shows the differences. This table compares cytochrome sequences, the one we had just above, compared to um, the human sequence. So in this case, the human's sequence is used as a reference, just like we use the sperm whale for DNA as a reference. So let's try and see. So it's the same principle as for DNA. If there are more differences, then the not as closely related. If there are less differences in the sequences, then they are more closely related. So maybe we could just um, number them. So in this set, the smallest number is one. So the monkey will be the close, most closely related species to the human. Then we have the rabbit with four, then five, the horse, then six, the chicken. Then we have eight with the frog. And then we have 13 with the shark. The nice thing about this site is that you can directly check if you've got it right. So I'm fairly confident that's right. So let's see if we can um, redo this phylogenetic tree. OK, so you've got these numbers here to indicate the number of amino acid differences. Um, so we said that the monkey was the second closest. Then it was, let's have a look, the rabbit. Then the horse. Then it was the chicken. then the frog, and then the shark. And if you've done it correctly, it will tell you, well done. So again, this is a way of um, showing that there are relationships between species by comparing the number of amino acids. And it can also give you some kind of timeline of when these certain of these mutations occurred. 4.3, dating molecular physiological changes. To do that, I think the best thing is for you to have a look at back exercise, study of globins back 2013. So you've got this in your booklets. 
So you can have a look at pages 19 and 20 and this back exercise will give you good indication of how this dating of molecular physiological changes is done. This is a bit of a short video but you've got a bit of work with this back exercise. Um, that's all for this video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.